Hello, Sarah Sabin here, and I am very excited to have with me today Dan Hannigan Daly, who is in the process of just completing my Evolved Leader Mastermind group. Dan, hello. And I'd love to start by asking why you wanted to do a mastermind program. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, the Ability to have some level of coaching uh, as an executive is important to me and, and certainly like had a really good experience uh, in the prior 12 months with you in our one-to-one -one sessions. Um, as an executive, it can be quite lonely at the top. And so having the opportunity to surround myself with a few other folks, especially of different walks of life as well. Mm -hmm. um, in different industries was appealing because I do sort of broadly believe in the value of diverse thought and experience and some of the sort of opportunities from for learning that that can present. So really that was the that was the main driver, kind of continuous ability to to learn from you and learn from others and, and sort of sort of sharpen the pencil um as an executive, especially where you know between between you and I and our sessions, like I haven't had the most um I haven't had the ability to learn as much from my board as I would have probably preferred. So this is an interesting outlet for me to sort of continue on that path. Mm, yeah, I mean, what you've mentioned, the part about uh, being a bit lonely at the top and wanting to learn from a group of people who may be diverse in terms of what they're doing and where they're living, but are essentially on the same journey. And, right. you know, their objective and outside of your company as well. For sure. It, yeah, it been... comes up a lot. Really, really interesting just like there's even if they're in completely different industry stages of of their businesses by and large there's a lot of shared experiences um with respect to like the challenges of being a leader whether that's from from financing to you know dealing with uh other founders or other members of the leadership group that may be challenging to deal with various the various headwinds that exist that are out there and seemingly never go away. I think there's a lot of interesting sort of thought and um, and a good just like a good feedback loop from uh, from the group that the mastermind created, which is cool. Okay, awesome. So, what did you learn about yourself during this experience, and what did you learn from the other members of the group? Yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, I had a unique experience with the mastermind setup because I, I missed a lot of classes as I had a, I had a health issue, um, which was not ideal necessarily. And, and sort of broadly, you know, my, my perspective in, in my positioning, even within my business has changed quite a bit over the past six months. Like I sort of not completed the journey, but I've been, been through a lot of the journey that I wanted to, um, when I had left, uh, where I was previously and, and, and learned a lot. So I think with the mastermind, what it really sort of showed me was like, it's really, really hard to be a founder, to be a leader, to, to sort of try to run your own business, especially if you don't have the best support system out there, which it kind of seemed like that was one of the themes of the group was, um, everyone sort of had some. I don't want to say like skeletons in the closet by any means, but like there were very specific challenges across each of the individuals that like really showed like this, this shit is hard. Um, and you have to really, really have conviction in what you're doing, the people around you, the opportunity set, if you're going to sort of plow through it. And so it kind of, not that it like made me change my direction necessarily, but I think it was, a, it was an interesting input into my decision making, which is like, I'm not in the place that I want to be. You know, I've, I've, I'm comfortable dealing with struggles if I have conviction about what that thing is. But I think as time went on, my, my conviction around my business has changed. And, you know, understanding the, the risks and struggles that and just for seeing what others have gone through, I think it sort of changed my perspective a little bit. And like, I've got a kid coming on the way and whatnot. So like a lot of like life impacts um all sort of went into this melting pot to like determine that I'm going to actually change change my direction a little bit um at least in the immediate term 
everybody deals with a lot of challenge and there's that there's that kind of like sense of loneliness at the top which i think you want to avoid and it and sort of reflecting and taking a step back like it get very much if i was to sort of go at it again by go at it i mean like start a new business or something like that like i think having a really tight-knit core founder group is hyper hyper critical um and like just pulling people together because they're talented isn't the right move. There has to be emotional and connectivity there that I think is is hard hard to appreciate, but something you shouldn't discount. Like I think it was Naomi specifically, like had a lot of friction with the founder who was not, they just weren't on the same page, like seemingly ever. And when I think about my own experiences, I've seen that friction at SIS like a lot because I mean, I'm not the founder, but coming in like be it the, the first chairman or the second chairman like we always had there's just disconnects as far as like our vision and our and our perspective on things and then when i counteract that with my time at DraftKings and seeing that founder group like they're all very different but they all see the world and and have that they just have that connectivity and that sort of shared vision that enable them to get to incredible heights and sort of withstand a lot of those pressures that inherently exist. Like even that business, while it's incredibly successful now and worth, you know, $20 billion or whatever it is, there were times five years ago, six years ago, eight years ago, where like they had gone into the toilet. Um, but they had that sort of camaraderie and connectivity to to fight against that. And so I think that's that's probably something that just I've now appreciated more through through this experience and just getting exposure to um to other folks who are going through somewhat similar journeys i suppose mm. and i actually just want to draw on one of the points you said because it's a really important one there's a difference between a group of people and a team and right. the difference Very is much, yeah. <laughs> the difference is the two things you said emotional connectivity and that shared vision or purpose now, without that, you've just got a group of people working together and sometimes with differing agendas. So, you know, your role as a leader is to bring people together so that they actually function as a team. Um, and I'm glad that particular part became highlighted to you as a course of seeing some of the challenges that other okay. members of the group were facing. So in terms of tangible changes that you've noticed, I know you're actually making a big change. So having brought SIS to the point where it is, brought it to stability, you're actually now moving on, which is exciting. Yeah, and I, I think it kind of goes back to that point where, you know, as someone who's surrounded myself with sports and sort of grown up in that sort of team environment and dynamic, I really sort of like two aspects of business that like I really, um, I find myself drawn to and like that, that team setup, which I think DraftKings has, you know, in, in spades and like there's the retention rates of people there, especially like really, really high quality people are very, very high. And so it's sort of drawn to that. And then just like, that competitive dynamic that exists in their ecosystem where like, there's always that group that you're against. So that helps create that camaraderie and that sort of team dynamic, because there's like a shared, it like a shared enemy. Um, as sort of silly as that, as that sounds like, I believe in the competitive spirit um, of people in a business. And I think that's a really big draw for me and something like with SIS, like we, we never really had that. Like there's, the vision was just like, get this thing from V1.0 to V2.0 and find an exit, do something, create shareholder value, which is like cool and great, but like, it's not as exciting and necessarily like impactful and not something that like wakes me up every morning with that motivation to go and, and excel versus like, there's a direct competitor or a set of competitors. There are very clear sort of goals and opportunities associated with it, um, with, with a group like DraftKings you have that team element um, and even like the founders are hyper involved as part of that team element and sort of our quasi coaches that I've found. And it's been, that was probably one of the more interesting things for me 
as as part of like the decision making process to go back was just like how how my relationships with those key individuals has changed by virtue of leaving you know rolling the dice taking on a little bit more leadership um I think I have more shared experiences with them now than I would have had I not actually departed. And so I think it set myself up sort of better, better going in. And like, you know, I have all this learning in my back pocket. That's like, you know, if I five years down the road, have some amazing idea, like I have all of the, not all of the knowledge, but like a lot of knowledge of like the things to do and the things well, almost as importantly, the things not to do to structurally set something up so that, you know, if there is that, that opportunity to go on another sort of moonshot that I can go and take that and, and structurally have the, the advantages created from the hawk versus, you know, the structural disadvantages that I think I inherited with, with SIS, which mm. was a really good experience and a lot of learning, but like really, really, really hard relative yeah. to any other experience I've ever had for sure. And um, you did well to uh, get through those challenges, but the point I want to draw on is the fact that there needs to be alignment of vision. So essentially at the point that the vision of you as the leader and the rest of the board starts to diverge, that's a problem. Sure. So it's also about knowing when to stay and when to walk away. Right. And walking away isn't necessarily because, oh, I'm so fed up and life is challenging, et cetera. It's more because you feel pulled towards doing something else because of the experience you had. And that's what I'm hearing from you when you're talking about going back to DraftKings now. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, certainly there's an element of almost like enabling, not necessarily a reset, but like enabling an opportunity to present itself where someone else can come in who is more aligned with <laughs> those shareholders and, and the board um, and who has that incentive alignment, sort of visionary alignment, whatever it might be, because there, just by virtue of how things played out with SS, like there was this friction that was just there, whether or not, and I, and I, and I think without me leaving, it would never go away. And by virtue of me, even me just like sharing that I'm departing, it's like changed the dynamic a mm -hmm. little bit. And actually it's like already kind of quasi repaired some relationships, which is a little bit counterintuitive to be honest. Um, but I think it's, yeah, I think it's just critically important that there's like aligned vision incentive so that you can go and exceed and, or sorry, and, and achieve the, the stated goals. So like without it, if the broad strokes are just like, yeah, we got to make more money and spend less money. It's like, well, yeah, obviously that's, that's business. But like, what are we actually trying to do here? That's not the most motivating thing in the world. It's make more money, spend less money. Like, unless you're solely driven by money, which, you know, most people are not explicitly solely driven by the money, um, you know, it's created some challenges otherwise. Mm, yeah, for sure. So last question, Dan, would you recommend the mastermind and for whom would you recommend the mastermind? Yeah, I mean, certainly, I think in general, any executive should seek some sort of coaching. Um, I think that's a, that's a no brainer, um, especially if you're, Actually, honestly, if you're new to the role, if you're experienced in the role, either way, I think it's I think it's super valuable. Um, if you are in a leadership position and you don't have a great support network of other people around you who are in similar dynamics, so like for myself, company solely remote. Um, I don't go into an office, so I don't get a lot of exposure to to other founders, especially outside of my industry. Like I'm. I see all the people at all of the whatever networking events and whatnot that um, are associated with, with sports tech and sports betting, but like don't get exposed. I don't go to collision or I don't go to any of these other conferences and get all these other sort of incremental exposures. So I think if you're in that sort of similar dynamic, there's a lot of value in getting exposure to uh, other aspects or I guess other, other leaders who are in a similar ish space or, or at least position um, but that are tackling slightly different problems or slightly different uh, opportunity sets as well. Like I think there's a lot of there's a lot of value from that, um, especially if you're able to like commit to the time and energy associated with this. Like anything, but like you only get out what you put in. Um, and so my my output is probably not as great as I would have wanted it to be because I was on the sidelines for a decent period of time. But, but yeah, 
summary would be yes, I would certainly recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Thank you, Dan, for this conversation today. No worries. Thank you.